Welcome again. We are reading right now Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35 on the road to Emmaus. Now, there's something that happens during this passage of Scripture that's very mysterious. And we're going to talk about it. Let's start. Behold, two of them, that's two of the disciples, were going that very day to the to a village named Emmaus, which was about 60 stadia, that's about seven miles or about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They talked with each other about all these things which had happened. While they talked and questioned together, Jesus himself came near and went with them. Now, you know, this is what happens sometimes. Now, you know, today in this day and age, we we have the presence of Jesus not physically like these uh, disciples had at this time, but uh, we have the presence of Jesus in the Spirit. We have the Spirit of Jesus. So a lot of times what could happen is when you're talking about Jesus, Jesus himself can show up, you know, and this is a very wonderful thing. Let's continue. Verse 16. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Mm, that is a very, very powerful point. It's possible for Jesus himself to be with you and not even recognize him. Can you, can you imagine? These disciples were those who saw Jesus in the flesh, that knew his voice, that knew exactly what he looked like. They, they would be able to recognize him, you know, fast. I mean, especially, you know, having been with him for so long. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And this is the thing. You see, a lot of people that go to church today, a lot of believers and followers of Jesus, if you were to really come to them in the real spirit of Jesus, in the real, you know, speaking the real words of Jesus to them, a lot of times they would not even recognize it as Jesus. They might recognize it as something strange. They might even rebuke it, you know. Now, this is a very interesting phenomenon that happens here. Let's continue reading. Verse 17, he said to them, what are you talking about as you walk and are sad? Hmm, why would you be sad? One of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things which have happened there in these days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, The things concerning Jesus, Yeshua, the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Take note, mighty in deed and word. <laughs> My friend, fellow follower of Jesus, preacher of the gospel, you need to be mighty in deed and word. A lot of times your words can be great, your words can be pretty good, but if you're not mighty in deed, in your works, in what you do, mighty in deed, and you're not really doing what Jesus would have done, and you're not really doing what Jesus did, are you? So uh, you have to be mighty in deed and word, okay? Word and deed. Verse 20, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him? But we were hoping that it was he who would redeem Israel. We were hoping that he would be the Messiah. We were hoping, you know, we thought that we, he was the Messiah. You know, uh, like a lot of Jews Today, they have an idea of, you know, the Messiah is someone who comes and is a political ruler uh, in, in, uh, in Israel and redeems, you know, the Jews. Let's continue. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Also, certain women of our company amazed us, having arrived early at the tomb. And when they didn't find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of us went to the tomb and found it ju just like the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, foolish men. And this is the meek and mild, nicey, nicey Jesus that some people believe that he was. 
The first thing he says to them is, foolish men, foolish men, slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? You know, this is what Jesus would say to anybody who doesn't understand. You know, the Messiah, the Mashiach, the Christ, had to suffer, had to suffer these things as the prophets have prophesied. And those who do not see it, Jesus would say, they're foolish. Okay, let's go on. Verse 27, beginning from Moshe, beginning from Moses and from all the prophets, he explained to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, this is very, very important, my friend. This is very, very important, fellow believer, fellow Christian, fellow follower of Jesus, fellow preacher. You must have insight into the Word of God. You must be able to see Jesus in the Old Testament, so to speak. In the days of Moshe, in the days of Moses, in the Torah, you have to be able to see. And I pray that each one of you would have that spiritual revelation to see Jesus in the pages of the Torah. And it says here, you know, it says that Jesus explained, beginning from Moses and from all the prophets, the things concerning himself. So uh, you need to be able, when you're reading the Bible, when you're reading the Torah, when you're reading the old prophets, the old books of the prophets, you need to always be in prayer. You need to be saying to yourself, Father, oh God, show me Jesus in this passage. Show me Jesus here. You know, enlighten my eyes. Give me revelation here. It's very, very important. Okay, very, very important. Let's continue. Verse 28, they came near to the village where they were going and he acted like he would go further. They urged him saying, stay with us for it is almost evening and the day is almost over. He went in to stay with them. Now, you know, this happened, you know, several times throughout the gospels where Jesus, you know, he didn't really force his way into anybody's conversations or force his way into anybody's home. You know, he he acts like he's just going on. He's moving on, you know, and he he's looking for the people to invite him in. Okay. Uh, don't let don't let Jesus pass you by, so to speak. Invite him in. And I know some of you you would think, well, I've already invited Jesus into my heart. No, you need to you need to invite him in all the time, okay? You need to, you need to make sure he is always there that he's never moving on from you, okay? Let's read on. Verse 30. When he had sat down at the table with them, he took the bread and gave thanks. Breaking it, he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Then he vanished out of their sight. Now, it makes, it makes you wonder, what was it that caused them to realize this is Jesus himself. Was it the way he said the blessing? You know, did he have a certain way that he always, you know, said the blessing, that he blessed God, you know, how a lot of the Jews do today, you know, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Was there a certain way that he did it that was completely different from, from everybody else? You know, did he bless God? Did he refer to God as Father, where, you know, a lot of people didn't? What was it that caused them to realize this is Jesus? What was it? So after they had a revelation that, hey, this is really Jesus. We were talking to Jesus. You know, this was really Yeshua. Now, let's see what they said. Verse 32, they said to one another, weren't our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us along the way and while he opened the scriptures to us? You see, it's Jesus' heart. It's the way he taught. He opened the scriptures to them. You know, indeed, everything that he taught was opening the scriptures to people. You know, he, he said, you have heard it said this, but I say this. You have heard it said that, but I say, you know, the other thing. What was he doing? He wasn't changing anything. He was just expounding upon the scriptures, you know, really just 
teaching people what it really means, how to really apply it. He wasn't changing anything. So his purpose was to explain, to expound upon the scriptures. Because a lot of people misunderstood and mistranslated the scriptures. And even to this day, a lot of people misunderstand, mistranslate, mis, you know, misinterpret the scriptures. And so we need the revelation of God to, to see what the scriptures really have to say, really have to say. Not biased, but really, you know, down to earth, the truth, okay? We want to know the truth. Verse 33, they rose up that very hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Verse 35, they related the things which happened along the way and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Again, he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. How was it that he broke the bread? What was it about that that caused these disciples to recognize him? Was it the way that he referred to God as Father? Was it the way he blessed God, that no other person would bless God in that way? Was it just the way that he did it? Was it just that, you know, he blessed and he, and he broke and, and, you know, he again just assumed the rabbi position of just taking the bread, breaking it, and handing it out to the people, you know? He just took charge. Uh, so this is very, very intriguing, very, very intriguing. And so I pray that God would just expound to us more and more his scriptures, would just show us more and more things about what really happened here. You know, years ago when I first experienced the, uh, the infilling of the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God came inside of me, and I thought to myself, you know, I, I read the scriptures over and over and over again, but when the Spirit came into me, when the Spirit of God came into me, it was like the lights came on. This is what I always pray for, and this is what I'm always you know, this is my desire for you, is that your eyes would be enlightened. Picture being in a room that has absolutely no light in it whatsoever. You can't see a thing. You know, you can't see anything. You can go around, you can feel. Oh, the, the, this, you know, this is a table. This, you know, the, these are walls. But then all of a sudden you find the light switch, you flick the light switch on and the lights come on and you see the wood grain in the table. You see very, very beautiful old-fashioned wallpaper on the wall. These kind of things you you don't see, you, you did not see before because you didn't have that illumination. A lot of people, when they're reading the Bible in their faith and in their belief, it's like they're in this completely dark room. They know that it's a table. They know that it's a wall. You know, they know that it's a chair, but they do not see the details. They don't see really what is written. They know it's paper, but they don't see what's written on it. They know they have a book in their hands, but they can't read it. And so when the Spirit of God really comes into you, the Spirit of God is a holy spirit. Do not claim to have the Spirit of God if you're not living holy, okay? Because the Spirit of God is a holy spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, then you will see things. Things will come to light. You'll be able to read the paper. You'll be able to see the wallpaper. You'll be able to see the table. You'll be able to see the, the design on the chair, which you never saw before. I pray that that happens to every one of you that are watching. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, thank you.